Hi everyone, today I'm going to talk about a problem which uses recursion called find a path in a maze. This is a great problem because you need to use that for search. It's a graph problem which is really common in coding interviews. And in this problem and all the problems that I'll be posting, I'll be using the debugger. So the debugger is a great way to see what's going on inside of your program. Also, in the description below, I have a video where I explain the best resources to pass interview problems from FANG companies. That's how I pass Microsoft interview. So make sure you get that video. That's going to be super helpful. It's going to get a lot of time in your preparation. So without further ado, let's take a look at the problem. So uh, this problem is pretty straightforward to understand. If you take a look here, we will be having a 2D array. You have a starting position that is at the bottom left of your screen and you have an ending position of your screen and you need to find a path. So one way we can do that is using depth first search. So now let's take a look at the code itself and we're going to step through the function. So I created a 2D array. So one represents a spot that you can't traverse. So you can think of it as an obstacle. Zero is a cell that you can traverse. So the way we're gonna solve this is using a function called maze solve, which takes into a 2D array and the ending position. So once you reach this ending cell, you're done with the search. Uh, he's not asking for the quickest uh, path, just if there is a path. So what we do is we call maze with row zero and length maze zero minus one. What that basically means is the ending will be row zero, which is the first row, and length maze zero minus one gives the last column. So basically we want to uh, grab the first call. So once we start, we need to make a bunch of checks and we return false if any of these conditions are not true. So we need to check if X is within the bounds. If it's outside of the 2D array, we return false. If Y is outside of the bounds, we will have a, a visited set. So we need to keep track of the cells that we have already visited in order to make sure that we don't revisit any cells. And we also check that it's zero because if it's not zero, it means that it's blocked. So if any of these conditions is not true, what we're gonna do is we're gonna return false. We append the current cell because obviously it didn't fall into one of the conditions that uh, meant it was false. So we uh, add that to the visited, we add that to path. If it's equal to the ending condition, we return true. And this is a template I really like to use when I'm doing 2D traversal sort of problems. I create a directions array that basically starts going to the right, so that's zero, 01. So zero is the x coordinate, uh, the second one, one is the y coordinate. So that means add zero to x add one to i, meaning go to the right, right? Because if we are at row zero, zero, we add one to the column. We keep the same row, but we add one column to the right. So that means go to the right. One zero means going down. Zero minus one means going to the left. Minus one zero means going up. So we loop through this uh, array of directions and we recursively call find path. So basically we'll go to the left, up, right, and down to make sure that, uh, to try that, uh, that condition. If any of those conditions are true, we recursively call true all the way to the beginning of the first call and we return true to the uh, calling function and we are done with the traversal. If, however, I explored every single direction and I didn't find a path, 
I remove that cell from visited because I want to try it again later and not delete it from the path, meaning this is not a valid path and I return false. So when I'm talking like that, it's kind of complicated. So that's why I'll be using the debugger. So let's put actually a breakpoint here. So this is my, uh, this is my cell. So let's call the debugger. So we run the code. And right now our ending position is 0, 03. So 0, 03 will be this last one. Our maze will be the maze that we passed. So we'll start from the bottom left. We want to reach the top right. Uh, the path is empty, so the path will contain all the cells which uh, all the cells which uh, take me from the bottom left to the top right. And that's it. So let's tap into. So now we're going to check, check if X and Y are within the bounds. So X and Y are within the bounds. Uh, and it's also going to check if it, X and Y is not in visited. Visited right now is empty, so it's not in visited. We're good. It's also zero, so we're also good. So we're not going to return false. So we add that cell. 3-0, where we're starting to the visited set. We check if we're done. So if we're at the top right, we're going to return true. That's not the case. So now we look through the directions array. So the first try is always going to be to the right. So if you think in terms of recursion, it's going to try going all the way to the right. Then once it reaches one of the conditions where it's false, it's going to try to go down, left, and up. So that's what's gonna happen. We're gonna be three zero, but the first loop we do is gonna be three one because that's the first first uh, direction we do. So we check if three one is within the bounds. It is. So we add that to our visited set. We add it to the path. We're not done yet. So now we're gonna loop through the directions array again. So we do that. So let's go a bit quicker. So you guys got the gist. It will go all the way to 3-3, three, three, which is at the corner, right? So this cell here is 3-3. Three, three. So let's reach that. 3-3. Three, three. So now, according to this, we would go to 3-4, but 4 is out of bounds. So that's going to return false. So if you guys see, now it's not going to, so 3, 4 will be out of bounds. We're going to return false. So that means we'll try to go down. So now we're going to go down on 3, 3. So we're going to go 4, 3. So x will be 4, 3. And y, 3. But x equals 4, it's out of bounds as well. So that's also going to return false. The only direction I can go from the bottom right is up. So all or left, but since I'm coming from the left and that's already in the visited uh, set, that's not a valid direction. So the only way I can go is up. So it's gonna try to, is you're gonna return false again. So when it's shift three, it's gonna work. So that's up. So two, three is gonna work because that's up. So we add that to our path. And now basically we'll try to keep going up and it's gonna reach the ending condition. So let's, let's go there. I wanna go until it stops. So let's go, let's go. And now our path, we're currently at 0, 3, which is our ending condition. And we're going to return true, meaning there is a path from the bottom left to the top right. So that's how to solve this problem. I really, really recommend. So this code will be available on GitHub, which is on the description as well. Try out this code with the debugger. The debugger, one thing that I think I missed a lot of time when I didn't understand the algorithm, was trying to understand in my head, this is a terrible way because 
there are so many things going on here, you're gonna get confused. So when you use a debugger, you have an X-ray vision of your program. And that's what I want you guys to start having, to start understanding the insides of your program. That will really help you when you're doing an interview. So that's it. I hope you guys enjoy. I'll be posting videos pretty frequently now. And as I said, get your video where I explain the best resources to pass FANG interviews on the description. So hope to see you guys in the next video.